Hey, Tommy from The Run Testers. In this video, myself, Nick and Mike are all going to be talking about our experience of the London Marathon 2024. Uh, an interesting uh, day for the event because uh, one of us got a very impressive PB and you can probably guess who that is. Uh, right, let's dive in and uh, see what we all thought of the race. Park, South London, here for the start of the London Marathon. It is a lovely day at the moment, very sunny, a bit of a breeze going on. I'm tucked in behind a portal to try and avoid that ruining the video too much. Hoping actually the clouds are going to roll in and block that sun for the race itself. The temperature is pretty good, the wind is hopefully in a good direction. I think it should be northerly or northeasterly, which should be fine for the race. So, conditions look good, pretty good shape. Didn't have a very good night last night, killed one of the kids was ill, but other than that, I've slept pretty well this week, so I should be okay. Hoping to go out and run 330s per K through to around the 30k mark, and then in a dream world, I'd maybe push on a bit from there, but I maybe I'll just be holding on, or maybe I'll be falling off, who knows? But it's going to be a fun day, really looking forward to getting out and doing London Marathon nice and hard again after a couple of years of not running it as hard as my all-out race. I'm using the Essex Metro Speed Sky Paris today, I've talked about it a lot lately, it's my favourite carbon shoe, this is the first marathon test, like a proper marathon test I've done in it obviously, so I'm going to go and put it to the test over the full distance, see how it feels, hopefully get me a PB. Other main gear test is the Garmin Epix Pro versus the Apple Watch Ultra 2, see how those do on GPS around Canary Wharf, but I'm using a watch that much apart from just trying to keep myself in line in the first half of the race when it's easy to get carried away in London with big crowds and downhills, but yeah, all in all very excited for the race, looking forward to it. I'm here really, really early, the, uh, the club coach always drops us off incredibly early, so just going to try and uh, stay warm and and you know, in good shape ahead of the start in a couple of hours or so. And uh, yeah, hope everyone who is watching this had a very good race and I'll see you afterwards to see how mine went. So it is the day before the Lund Marathon. I'm gonna quickly take you through the kit that I will be testing and I'll start with shoes. And it will be this shoe that I'll be racing in. This is the New Balance SC Elite V4 and it is the London edition that New Balance has launched for the race. Well, I haven't run an SE Elite or raced in an SE Elite shoe before. I haven't raced in a New Balance shoe, so it would definitely be a new experience for me. In terms of other kind of marathon super shoes that I've tested, has it been the standout one for me? Possibly not, but I do think in terms of what I'm hoping or how I'm hoping I'm gonna perform out there, and maybe giving something that's gonna be a bit more accommodating if I have to ease off, I feel like maybe this is gonna be a shoe that's gonna help me do that, but also give me that faster feeling as well. Now, in terms of other things, watch-wise, I'm testing or will have on the Garmin Front 965 and the Polar Vantage V3, which I've been long-term testing, using during training, and I really wanna see how it's going to kind of help me gauge my performance, look at things at heart rate, GPS, and whether that's all going to be nicely aligned in a potentially kind of very tricky course when a GPS will kind of wreak havoc, particularly around London. Other things I'll have on headphones wise, I've had a last minute change. I was going to use the Syntosonic headphones, which I have been using, really enjoying using, and really having, you know, opting for open ear headphones to kind of really soak up some of the atmosphere. I have just received the kind of Bose uh, Ultra open earbuds, which are a little bit smaller, a little bit more discreet in terms of that form factor and offer a similar experience. I just think the idea of having something slightly smaller has kind of edged it for me in terms of using those. So that'll be my first kind of run, um, kind of race test with those as well. Other things I'm going to be having is I'll have a heart rate monitor chest strap, obviously to gauge the heart rate monitoring performance of the two watches. I'll have clipped onto that a core uh, temperature sensor, so we'll be collecting the data from the race to see if there's any kind of interesting insights from that. Uh, I'll also be uh, clipping on a device called the Flow Bio, which is a hydration tracker, and again it will be about seeing what the you know the story of uh, of my hydration and what's happened during a marathon, really kind of seeing what that can tell me from that point of view. I am in. Uh, London today. I'm about to do the London Marathon. I'm in the Blue Wave. Uh, I It's six days after Boston, which I didn't do very well at, so I am going to take it easy today. Uh, just get to the end, probably get something like 3.40 to 4 hours. Just enjoy it. Um... That's a 2.27.34. That's just... It couldn't have come better. I'm just delighted. Um, just... Oh. I'm just so pleased. I'm so pleased how that went. Just, just a beautiful, beautiful race, and I'm gonna go find my family. And I'm so, so pleased.
So it was the morning after the London Marathon, which obviously went very well yesterday. I got my PB. I had a fantastic race. I paced it really well. I kept moving through the gears throughout the entire race, nice and controlled in the first half, actually trying to tune out the crowd quite a lot and just stay very focused because it can be quite overwhelming. I tend to get a bit too probably overwhelmed by London because I enjoy it so much. Second half, you know, that happens still. Like just after Tower Bridge and running through to Canary Wharf is almost the best bit of the race I find for me. My club is there. Pretty much crazy when I see them. It's a good time. It's like downhill to start. I started to speed up a little bit to try and run a negative split, and everything was really flowing well. Hit Canary Wharf feeling really good. Just want to kind of get through Canary Wharf, hit about 35k feeling as I did then. Kind of latched on to then running with a guy from Dulwich, uh, James. It was amazing running with him. He really helped me out and um, felt really good right through to 35k. I felt really in control. 36k had my first kind of proper wobble and started to feel a bit, oh no. Just tr- kept trying to turn the feet over. Pace was still okay. Then I felt better at 38k, then at 39 back into full-on grind mode it was some funny photos of me just stooped over just trying to get through to the end but at that point I knew I could run you know, pretty poorly and still get a PB and I still actually managed to maintain my pace quite well and running up horse guards I was just looking for my family and that distracted me kind of pretty much the whole length of that uh, last stretch which is quite long all in all just I couldn't really have asked for a better race like I've obviously run sub 230 before in other places but it just means a lot more to me to run it at London it's my home race yeah it's my favorite race I've done it seven times now it's just, I've always found it quite a hard race to run really well but really did kind of nail it yesterday our training was you know fantastic for it I had like a, the highest mileage block I've ever done the hardest I've ever worked for it that like, was all going really smoothly right up to the Easter holidays and obviously the kids are off school things get a bit trickier there I had to do a 10 times one mile track session at 7 a.m which was tricky but got through it all everything went really well in training and then delivered on the day so yeah perfect let's move on to gear then Asics Matt Speed Sky Paris I've said a lot about the shoe and I've got nothing but praise for it after the London Marathon as well it's just a great shoe it's just like I say it's got that perfect balance of lightness and kind of bounce and propulsion so throughout the first 30k of the race running control running within myself just bouncing along really felt protected and comfortable in the shoe very easy just to move through those those k's you know ticking them off quite quickly and feeling very comfortable and then at the end when you're really tiring high turnover from the light shoe just keeps giving you that extra punch when you really are tired and my pacing just didn't really slow down too much at the end of the race like I thought I was slowing down a lot, but I was still turning over my legs. You do get a nice amount of bounce from these shoes. Like I've said in other videos, it feels easy to engage the plate when you're not running that well anymore. And you're, I think it's probably the bit of a difference to the Metaspeed Sky Plus where when I started to fall off it, I don't think I was putting enough force in. I wasn't necessarily getting a load of bounce back. But with the softer foam here, it feels easy just to get the plate going and just keep bouncing along even when you know you are tired and I'm really shuffling. So yeah, love the shoes even more after that race. Also say they're holding up really well, even at the heels. You know, I've done 170K in these shoes as a heel striker and I haven't ripped them too much yet. So that's a good sign nutrition went very good it's my normal nutrition plan with morton products i basically had something every 5k for the first 30k of the race i had two of the morton 100 caffeine gels one at 5k and one at 25k just to just give me those little bursts of caffeine energy throughout the race then i had half a 250 more soft flask at the other points up to 30k so 10 15 20 and then 30 that left me with one full soft flask for the final 12k and sometimes in the past i've not always been good about pushing my nutrition right through to the end of the race but i did this time i had half Half that sort of flask at 34k, half at 38. I think that really helped just to make sure I was fueled right the way to the end. I felt very good. Stomach was perfect for out. I've used this drink system a lot. You know, it's strange to carry so much fluid with you, and I'd love to get bottle service one day and have those drinks available just to pick up. But yeah, it works really well for me. Got really nicely fueled, perfect throughout. And I like the caffeine burst actually. I think I had a bit more caffeine in the race this time than I had before. I think I'll probably use the drink mix 320 with caffeine at my next marathon just to see if that will make a difference kind of mentally and how I feel in the race by having a bit more caffeine during it as well and then on the watches i had the apple watch ultra 2 and the garmin Epix pro uh, on my wrist the apple watch i had in pacer mode which basically i set the target time at just 2 27 59 and it kind of gives you a time ahead or behind throughout the race you know it had its ups and downs in terms of the automatic laps but most of the time they were pretty close to the k mark because the overall distance is very good i'm not sure if that's been correct just slightly because of the distance i set but it's fantastically accurate overall and basically that just gave me that 30 odd seconds ahead you know of target time as i was coming into the final bit i could see that wasn't really dropping i wasn't losing time and that felt really good and it was really impressive all round on the pacing accuracy of the apple watch the garmin epics pro i was manually splitting every 2k kind of using it to pace those 2k segments for the most part it was running a bit quicker you know the overall distance is a bit more because of weaving around and then the nightmare around canary wharf but 
overall pretty accurate again i'd say from the garmin and it was able to pace you know especially in the first half of the race using it which is the important thing that's what the watch is useful for is to make sure you actually are pacing well in that first half of the race I was running quite consistently around kind of seven minutes before those two k's sped up a little bit in the second half and then kind of just held on at the end looking at the gps trace i'd say around canary wharf the apple watch was a bit better than the garmin they both had a bit of trouble you know obviously skewing around those high buildings the apple watch did a little bit better there which is interesting because in high buildings during the london landmarks half marathon recently the garmin did a bit better throughout the rest of the race i'd say the apple had a few more wobbles than the garmin in terms of just general pacing and general gps trace but i'd say both of them are pretty good on gps didn't wear a chest strap yesterday and actually the garmin's heart rate was spot on throughout i mean it's hard to know that for sure because i wasn't wearing a chest strap but exactly as i would have expected a nice steady rise and it was useful to be able to look at my heart rate in the race and see that I hadn't risen too much in that first 30k which is very good Apple Watch's heart rate was out. I mean, I don't expect heart rate to be amazing of these things. I don't really use heart rate really in marathons and race days and that kind of thing, but I would still use a chest strap with these as I have done throughout the long-term testing I've done of them, but actually the Garmin's heart rate was pretty good yesterday. Overall, a pretty good day for both watches. Just show, even in a hard marathon like London, you have got that stretch around Canary Wharf where the GPS is going all over the place. You actually still could kind of use the watches to get a rough idea of pacing, and they certainly helped out overall. So I was definitely quite impressed with both of them. They both had their various uses on the day. Finally, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who did shout out or mention the run testers throughout the day yesterday it was really nice actually even sometimes running with people who went oh from the channel that was really nice as well so yeah i had a fantastic time it was really good I got a bit emotional when someone was speaking to me after the race about the channel it was really nice all round so thanks very much and obviously thanks to everyone who cheered in general big up ryan harriers who were amazing on the course and another very enjoyable london marathon but this time with my best ever time uh, as well <laughs> So it is the day after the London Marathon. My legs are definitely feeling like they've run a marathon, uh, but I was very happy in general with how things went yesterday. It was my first London Marathon. I've gone and watched the marathon before and I had a sense of what the atmosphere would be like, but nothing really prepared me for how loud it was at times being on that course uh, and the support throughout the route, which you know, is something I've not really experienced or that level of experience in the marathons. That I've done so that was definitely something very special now, in terms of the route itself and the race it's an interesting one for me because I'm from London I've done a lot of races and the routes that you know the London Marathon takes in so not narratively new for me but I think if you are you've never kind of run around London it's a great way to see a lot of things in one race so from that point of view I think you know I could understand why people absolutely love it it's a pretty quick course in general just some hilly parts in areas but not anything to, I don't think for most people to kind of massively be concerned about near the beginning and maybe near the end of the race was the biggest participants for the London Marathon I do feel like that contributed to being or the race being a little bit congested in places for me I definitely had to pass through a few more people and it might be down to me being in the wrong way because I wasn't sure how quick I was going to really be going when I kind of first entered um, the race but in general very happy with how things went I had a target of going out and doing 3.30 I think that was realistic from where I've been in terms of kind of recovering from injury and being able to do the training that I've been able to do and the paces I've been able to do ended up doing 326 a few minutes off my pb but very happy in terms of how the race went first off i went a little bit harder probably went out quicker than i anticipated probably gave me a little bit extra you know time to kind of work and kind of maybe ease off or maybe not ease off but maybe be a bit more cautious in the second half of the race mainly because i didn't you know i've had issues in the latter stages of races and for the first time in a few marathons it was absolutely fine and i felt very good throughout the kind of 26 miles um so yeah from that point of view felt pretty good so into testing and i'll start with the shoes and i was running in the new balance sc elite v4 now as i've mentioned before and in our review as well has this been the standout kind of marathon super shoe that i've used this year or tested not necessarily, but I think in terms of what I wanted to do in this race and how I wanted to do the race, I felt like it was the ideal shoe for me. I think if I had gone for something more overly aggressive, maybe I might have encountered more issues in the latter stages of this race. But that doesn't mean this wasn't a shoe that I felt like I could run fast in. I think in that first half of the race, I definitely felt like I was rolling through a lot quicker than I actually was. Um, and it felt very comfortable to do that. I think, you know, the, the thing that really stood out for me, it felt very stable to do that. I felt that ride was very smooth. I think I kind of rolled through very nicely in the shoe, but I didn't feel at any time I was out of control in the shoe. I think that was really important for me, particularly in this run. Now, when I did kind of ease off in the second half of the race, and that was really kind of dropping it just below kind of eight minute mile kind of pace, I was really kind of, you know, first part sticking to kind of 7.20, 7.30, which would get me to where roughly I needed to be. 
And to be honest, the shoe felt ideal for me. When I did that and I was kind of cruising maybe a little bit more, it felt fine. It felt like the ideal shoe to do that. And I think that, as I said, as I if I had gone for something a little bit more aggressive, I feel like maybe I would have felt that a little bit more in my legs. And to be honest, my legs felt pretty good in that shoe. I feel like it is a shoe that is designed for that kind of cruising marathon distance. And I felt like the paces that I was running at, it felt ideal. So a quick rundown of the other things that I was testing. Now I had the Garmin 4965 and the Polar Vantage V3, which we have tested on the channel, but I'm doing a kind of longer term test on those. And you know, what I really wanted to see for this test was how the, the GPS performed. And ultimately they were both similar in terms of performance. And what I mean by that is that they were a little bit off from, you know, the kind of measuring that kind of 26.2 miles. So what I expect in this kind of city marathon, uh, they were a little bit off, but ultimately they were both off uh, roughly about the same in terms of that distance tracking. Um, in terms of other things, so I had the core temperature sensor. Again, that was just about me collecting more data. I'm going to do a longer kind of term video on that. And then I had the flow bio um, hydration tracking sensor, just collecting my data. Once again, I'm going to kind of go through that information. I've only been able to kind of use it once. So once I get it back in, I'm going to do a longer term test and go through what that data really shows shows you and whether it is a useful device to have. The one I was really interested in was the headphones. As I said, normally I would use a pair of headphones like the AirPods Pro 2, the Jabra Elite 8 Active, and I would probably have active noise cancellation. But I was in London, I wanted to soak up the atmosphere. I decided to use the Bose Ultra Open Earbuds, and they, the main reason I picked those is because they were a little bit more discreet in terms of that form factor, and I didn't want to wear something too bulky, but still keep my ears free. Now, the issues pretty much started from the beginning. I put them in, left the case in my kind of kit, uh, drop bag and uh, one of the headphones didn't pair. So ultimately didn't start off well. So I decided I'm just gonna run with one of the earbuds, but I kept the other one in. I think about halfway during the race, one of the earbuds flung out when I went to grab some water. Fortunately, a spectator helped me locate it, probably wasted a couple of minutes looking for it. Um, so it's hard to really get a sense of how well they performed. I think, you know, I was using, listening through one and, you know, it was very easily drowned out in that crowd and their level of noise from the spectators uh, on, the, on the marathon course. Um, so not the ideal first test for the Bose Airbuds, which is a shame because I've kind of been generally using them. The sound seems pretty good in general, but perhaps they are not designed for the kind of all out racing, maybe kind of general running uh, is what I'm kind of feeling right now. So yeah, those were the key things that I was testing. As I said, there'll be videos on some of the things I've talked about here, which I've kind of done longer term testing, which I'll get into at a later date. So I'm back now from the London Marathon 2024 and that was a tough race for me. I did Boston Marathon on Monday. I really struggled on Monday because of the heat um, and the hills really killed my legs. I probably wouldn't do two marathons in a week again because I really struggled on the London Marathon. It um, it was a great day for it. It was really uh, cool. There was a bit of wind, but once you got into the uh, the city, once you got around the, the bigger buildings, you didn't notice the wind at all. So it worked really, really well. Nice breeze to keep you cool. Uh, it was perfect conditions basically for a marathon. I wish I'd had those conditions on Monday and not for the London Marathon because the other way around would have been a lot better and I could have probably got a faster time in, in Boston because it was really hot in Boston and uh, not perfect conditions for running a fast time. So the London Marathon, um, the event was great for me, really enjoyed the atmosphere, always uh, impressed by the crowds and everything at London Marathon. It, it really is, if you are going to do a marathon and you're maybe only going to do one or you want the whole experience, London is really the place to go for that. There's, I've done five of the majors now, and I would say that London and New York are the ones to go for if you're really there for the big crowds and everything like that. Uh, the other ones are pretty good, but um, London is just in another level uh, in terms of like the crowds and the support. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, the race itself, I'm not going to go into too much detail because we're all going to be talking about this, and it's London Marathon, so we've talked about it many, many times on videos before, but um, it is a great course. Uh, there's not really many hills in it. You get a bit of a downhill at the start. 
Uh, and if you want to get a fast time, it is a very good marathon to do. Not as fast as Berlin, I would say, um, but it's still one of the best ones when it comes to um, trying, trying to run quickly. Um, for me, it was really tough. I ended up with 3.55 minutes. I aimed to jog this because I'd done Boston on Monday and I've been feeling a little bit weak um, over the course of the last few days since I flew back. Uh, so I wanted to get around four hours. But in my head, I was thinking I'd do that and it would be quite easy running um, a four hour marathon uh, at my current fitness level. But I did not find it easy. I found it really, really hard. I got to about halfway running uh, at four hour marathon pace and my legs were just shot. I was really, really struggling to just maintain a pace and I had to walk quite a few bits. Uh, so it was a very, very hard marathon uh, for me to do. Uh, and I would only advise doing the Boston London um, double uh, if you really prepared to um, lose a lot of time on the, on, the, on the London one. Although I have got friends who did it and they got some fantastic times um, by doing Boston and doing London. So really impressive uh, work from them. And if you did do the double and you got the times that you wanted, well done, because it's not an easy thing to do. So because I wasn't racing London, I decided to pick a bit of a different shoe. I did have a few shoes that I was going to test out, including the Sockley Endorphin Pro 4, because I haven't used that on a race distance yet. Um, but I ended up deciding to go for the Sockney Triumph 22. The reason being is that I was focusing on just going pure comfort, and I wanted to take a shoe out that was designed for that. Um, and I've never, it's been a long time since I've done a marathon in a shoe that isn't a super shoe. Uh, so I thought it'd be quite interesting to see what it's like to run a marathon in a shoe that doesn't have a plate in it uh, and isn't designed for speed. So I have the Sockney Triumph 22. Um, the Triumph range, or the most recent versions of the Triumph range, are some of my favourite shoes that have been released over the past few years. I absolutely love the Triumph 20, 21. I think they're absolutely fantastic shoes. Love training in them, love doing recovery runs, love doing long runs in them. Um, and they just work really well. So this new um, version of the shoe, the 22, it does see a few changes, uh, including this new midsole foam, which has some Piva elements in it. Um, and I think there's some design updates to the top as well. Uh, it is a slightly different ride than what I've expected from the previous versions. Uh, that new midsole foam, uh, it, it's, it's definitely a little bit less soft uh, in, in the way it rides. Um, but it is a lot more responsive, um, which I was actually a bit surprised about in trying the trying the Triumph. Um, it's definitely becoming a slightly different shoe with this version, um, and probably veering more towards those longer training runs where you want a little bit of uh, proportion in there, a little bit of responsiveness, so that you can keep maintain a nice pace, um, but still give you the comfort that you get from the shoe normally. Um, what I would say is from the marathon is that uh, I. I did struggle a bit wearing this shoe during the marathon um, because I found it quite hard to maintain a pace um, that I wanted because I'm so used to running marathons in super shoes and having that sort of help from the plate um, and, and the foams to keep you maintaining a nice pace. So I did find it a bit harder to run in this shoe. Um, and also I would say that I, I've noticed the fact that it's not as soft um, as the previous Triumphs. It's a little bit, um, little bit firmer, uh, well, not necessarily in, uh, it's, it, it's still a soft foam, um, but it's a little bit more compressed and it just seems to be a little bit uh, more responsive as a result of this new this new design that's in there. So I did find it a little bit harder to run in this shoe over marathon distance and towards the end of the marathon, I really felt quite sluggish in this shoe. Um, that's not a bad thing because most people probably wouldn't use this shoe for a marathon, um, but uh, for me, it was probably not a great choice for marathon distance because I did want a little bit more um, a little bit more help uh, and I definitely am used to it from shoes like the Alpha Fly and, and the um, Tocqueney Dolphin Pro 3, which do have a lot of cushioning in, but they've also got a lot of um, bounce and proportion in, which you don't really get from, from this shoe. Um, the other thing I'd say about the shoe is it's very, very comfortable. The upper is really, really plush. There is a lot of cushioning in it uh, and the stepping comfort is fantastic. But I did find it really whole, hard to get a comfortable fit in. I had to stop a couple of times to rearrange the laces and um, loosen it up a bit because my feet were hurting a little bit in this shoe uh, at certain points. It's the first time I've worn the shoe. It's not surprising that I was going to have some issues in it. But I think the upper is a little bit harder to get a nice 
fit from the off. You really got to play around with it a bit. Um, and I had to loosen it quite a bit because it was feeling a little bit restrictive on my feet at cert in certain points of the shoe. Um, but other than that, it was a solid uh, run in the shoe. Um, very comfortable, didn't have any issues with it. Um, and I'll be taking it out this week for a more conventional run. Uh, so I'll be going for a bit of a shorter run in it um, later this week to test out. Uh, how it feels on a normal run that I would do in this shoe. But um, as far as the marathon distance goes, I don't think it's the best shoe for marathon distance for my style of running, but um, it's definitely a very comfortable and enjoyable shoe to wear out there. Also, I'm not gonna give a full review of this yet because uh, I a week after running uh, Boston Marathon, I'm probably a little bit more tired and my feet are probably a little bit weaker than they would be uh, normally for a review. So we'll do the first run and full review later uh, in the next week or so. That's it from us on this race test. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the little bell and all of those different things. And check the channel for all the other videos we've got coming up. Catch you next time. <laughs>